ever feel like just one wrong click and boom, total tech meltdown? No, tell me about it. Well, today's deep dive is taking us right into that nightmare scenario ransomware. Ooh, timely topic. Right. We're digging into this YouTube video, a whole simulated attack on a financial firm. Like a front row seat, but without the actual, you know, career ending stress. Exactly. They break it down minute by minute so we get to see the good, the bad, and the ugly of incident response. And believe me, it gets ugly fast if you're not prepared. No kidding. All right, so picture this. 8.05 a.m. Tuesday. Our fictional firm is just coming to life. Coffee's brewing. Computers are humming. The calm before the storm. Right. And then a few little tech hiccups pop up. A shared drive's being wonky. Some files aren't playing nice. The kind of stuff you think is just a Tuesday, right? Exactly. Until, that is, IT stumbles on a ransom note. And just like that, Tuesday just turned into a full-blown cyber catastrophe. Talk about a bad start to the day. Yeah. And it gets even worse. They quickly realize there's a whole new strain of ransomware. Oh, so they're totally flying blind. Yep. No known fixes. No playbook to follow. Just them. A ticking clock and a whole lot of unknowns. And this, my friend, is why that incident response plan is not just a suggestion. It's your lifeline. Totally. When every second counts, knowing who does what and when can be the difference between, well, surviving and going under. Couldn't have said it better myself. So while everyone's trying not to panic, the IT and security teams jump into action. First things first, they need to figure out how bad it is. Which systems are infected? How far has it spread? What kind of data is at risk? It's like digital detective work, but with like way higher stakes. And speaking of high stakes, they've also got to figure out their communication strategy. Because inside the company, you need to keep people informed without causing a mass exodus for the exits. Employee communication is huge. You want transparency, but you also don't want to create unnecessary panic. Exactly. And then there's the outside world. Clients, partners, maybe even the media. They're going to catch wind of this, and you got to be ready. This is where that pre-written crisis communication plan comes in. Having those statements ready to go helps ensure consistent messaging. Right, so you're not scrambling while you're already in crisis mode. Precisely. So by 8.45, things are getting real. Not only are they staring down a PR nightmare, but now the legal team's getting involved. D data breach laws, disclosure requirements. Because a cyber attack isn't just a tech problem, right? Nope, it's a legal minefield. And yeah. just when you think it can't get worse, they get hit with the worst possible news, their recent backups. Toast. Wait, what? Yep. Remember how this was a brand new strain of ransomware? Yeah. Well, seems like the attackers planned for that. They got to the backups, too. So they're totally up the creek without a paddle now. Pretty much. Our financial firm is facing the digital abyss. Their system's down, their data's at risk, and they're scrambling for a way out. Welcome back to the deep dive, where things are about to get way more interesting. Our financial firm is still very much in the thick of it. Their backups are gone, and they're facing that awful moment of truth. What do you do when the unthinkable actually happens? It's the ultimate cybersecurity nightmare, right? You plan for the worst, but deep down... You hope it never actually happens. <laughs> exactly. But hope is not a strategy. Yeah. And unfortunately, our financial firm is learning that the hard way. So no backups. Systems are still down. It's time to break out the emergency plans, right? That time. This is where all that disaster recovery planning, all those fire drills, they need to kick in. Because it's one thing to have a plan... But it's got to actually work when the pressure's on. Exactly. And the pressure is definitely on. They're trying to get those essential services back online, but it's like trying to rebuild a plane while it's still in the air. Oh, that's a terrifyingly good analogy. Isn't it? They're looking at alternative systems, workarounds, anything to keep some semblance of operations going. But at the same time, they're trying to keep the ransomware from spreading even further. Exactly. It's a two front war contain the damage while also trying to restore what's been lost. And they're not alone in this fight. This is where they're calling in the cavalry. Bringing in their own experts, cybersecurity mm. specialists, maybe even law enforcement. Oh, absolutely. Law enforcement can be invaluable in these situations, providing insights into the attackers, the specific type of ransomware used. Because chances are, this wasn't a random attack. These attackers probably knew exactly who they were targeting and how to hit them where it hurts. Oh, without a doubt. And that's why understanding your own vulnerabilities is so important. It's like that old saying, know thy enemy. But in this case, it's know thyself and your weaknesses just as well. Because if you don't know your weaknesses, the attackers will find them for you. Guaranteed. And they'll exploit them without a second thought. But even with all the experts, all the help, 
the reality is this is not a quick fix. This is going to be a long road to recovery. Absolutely. They're not just trying to get back to business as usual. They've got to rebuild from the ground up, learn from their mistakes, and make sure this never happens again. So they're digging deep, figuring out exactly how this happened, what worked in their response, and what failed miserably. And hopefully they're taking notes because that post-mortem analysis, that's not about pointing fingers. It's about understanding how to prevent history from repeating itself. So as our financial firm grapples with the aftermath, they're facing a whole new set of challenges. How do you rebuild trust with clients who may have been impacted? How do you reassure investors that you're not a risky bet? And maybe even more importantly, how do you create a culture of security awareness that goes beyond just the IT department? Because everyone has a role to play in cybersecurity, from the CEO down to the intern. Everyone. 100%. And that's something we're going to explore even deeper in part three of our deep dive, where we'll uncover the long-term consequences of this attack and the crucial steps our financial firm takes to rebuild, resecure, and hopefully come out stronger on the other side. Welcome back to the deep dive. Our financial firm is still picking up the pieces after that brutal ransomware attack. They've thankfully contained the breach, but uh, now they're facing that daunting task of actually rebuilding. It's like, you know, after a natural disaster, you've survived the worst of it, but now you're left looking at the wreckage, trying to figure out where to even start. And in this case, the wreckage is digital. They're sifting through corrupted files, compromised systems, trying to salvage what they can, and, well, accepting that some things are just gone forever. It's a tough pill to swallow, for sure. And this is where that post-mortem becomes absolutely critical. Right, because it's not just about fixing what's broken. It's about figuring out how it broke in the first place. Exactly. Were there vulnerabilities they overlooked? Did their security systems fail? Was it, you know, the dreaded human error? And sometimes it can be a combination of factors, a perfect storm of, you know, system glitches, missed warning signs, and maybe someone clicking a link they shouldn't have. It's like a detective story. They're piecing together clues from log files, system reports, you know, even interviewing employees trying to trace the attacker's steps. And just like any good detective story, the goal is to find the culprit and make sure they can't strike again. Precisely. They need to identify those vulnerabilities, patch those security holes, and make sure they're better prepared for whatever comes next. Because as we've seen in this attack, the bad guys, they don't rest. Oh, absolutely not. They're constantly evolving their tactics, finding new ways to exploit weaknesses. And that means that for companies like our financial firm, this recovery, it's not a one-time thing. It's a whole new normal, isn't it? they got to be constantly learning, adapting, upgrading their defenses just to stay ahead of the curves. Exactly. They've got to build a culture of security awareness where everyone from the top down understands the importance of vigilance, of strong passwords, of not clicking on suspicious links, you name it. It's like they say, right, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Or in this case, a whole lot of digital headaches and financial losses. Couldn't have put it better myself. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of ransomware and recovery, remember, it's not just about technology, it's about people, too. Because ultimately, it's people who make those decisions, click those links, and design those defenses. Absolutely. And by working together, learning from our mistakes, and never underestimating the threat, we can create a safer, more resilient digital world. Truer words have never been spoken. Stay safe out there, everyone.